Well, hey, what is up, everyone? And welcome back to our Young Adults podcast here at Liverpool One Church. We have regular conversations on hot topics and questions to help you through these defining and challenging stages of your life. And all being well, we will be able to bring you some biblical wisdom and relevance into your world to help you equip you to thrive. And today we have very special guest, Josh Scott. <laughs> I'm excited to have Josh with us. He, yeah. You two are looking to say you must have rang each other and just we went organized in, uh, this. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> you should have told me. I mean, I'm wearing black, so it's kind of kind of yeah. with it. Yeah. But um, we're excited because, yeah, hey, we we've are. done some podcasts with just me and Nathan, but hey, you're getting a bit bored of us. So we are bringing in some fresh... <laughs> Fresh people, fresh, fresh faces. faces. You're looking Who very love fresh. Face? Uh, I don't sometimes. <laughs> you're looking very fresh for having a young baby. I know. I hear you're up at 5 a.m. Yeah, she is, yeah. yeah. Really? We're not necessarily up at that time, but she <laughs> likes to her. get us up at yes. that time. Just courage, she's just stood in that cart like that. <laughs> so, yeah, but you got two, so. Mine's easy well, in comparison. Mm, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. But, yeah, yeah, Layla's like, she's not even there. It's Clara who's the crazy one. But anyway, <laughs> anyway. But no, Josh, thanks so much for just coming on yeah. and for being just so willing to open up about your story. And I think actually we were speaking the other week, weren't we? And we didn't realize that we kind of maybe had been through some similar stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think um, I'm excited to get into this because I think actually um, when we talk about um, anxiety, mental health. Yeah. Often, um, it's good to come at it with an approach of, yeah, actually, I've experienced it, and it's not the same for everyone. Mm. So I think like um, I'm just really excited for to see how you've went through your experience to hopefully yeah. benefit me and vice versa. And yeah, for yeah. all the young adults listening, yeah, um, I think that this topic of mental health, anxiety is something that this generation struggles with. Yeah. And I think that we have potentially been through a little bit where maybe we know Mm. a couple of things or at least have experienced it to be able to give some insight. Um, But I'm I'm super grateful that you'd be willing just to come on, to open up, to be vulnerable, because it's not easy. Yeah. And I think especially on this type of topic, it's really important that we treat it with respect to a certain extent yeah. where yeah. people know that this is a serious issue, this is a serious topic, but yet many people face it and many people will be able to come through it stronger, better. And I think um, it's just so relevant yeah. for society today. And right? I, I'm excited for, you know, for both of you guys, because, you know, if people are part of Liverpool One Church, they will soon to know that, you know, they see Josh's face, they see your face on platform, you know, you lead worship week in, week out. Amazing. You know, you come on and, and host the service and things like that. And the fact that you guys are then stepping out and talking about this is, is really exciting because I think people will be like, whoa, no way, you know, because they see this persona of, you know, you on, on platform and then don't know really what's behind. So I'm excited. So let's get straight into it, guys. Um, So why is it, you know, we're talking about mental health. Why is it so hard to talk about mental health? I think I, I, from a male point of view, and I know, you know everyone, equality, and I absolutely agree, but <laughs> I think from you, if you're head of the household and you're leading your family, yeah. I, th- I find it quite embarrassing sometimes that mm. you think, no, I'm struggling with this and I just can't, I can't deal with this or I, I just can't face that decision or, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think there should be a stigma about it. I think in this country, there's a particular stigma about it. I know in the yeah. States, like everyone has a shrink and everyone yeah. sees a counselor. It's and a I normal think that's, thing. Like, super healthy. Uh, but here, I just don't think, I think more so lately, I think people talk about it more, hence we're talking about it. Um, but especially from when I was a teenager, I don't remember people talking about it. I don't remember feeling able to talk about it um, to anyone outside your family. Yeah. Um, but yeah, was it the same for you? Like, was it, it was. And I think just looking back, it was like a hush-hush thing. Yeah. Like there was a few members of my family that had depression and for years they were isolated and it was, we're not going to go to their house. We're not going to socialize with them. It's all in the hush hush. It's like a stigma yeah. seemingly through maybe a generational pattern. I'm not sure. Um, but people just didn't know how to respond. They didn't know what to do Yeah, because it's not necessarily like an illness where you can treat it necessarily with like, you know, various forms of of going into hospital and getting procedures done and that type of thing because it's in your head. Mm. And yes, you can get medication for anxiety and depression, but 
I think in the general sense, back then, they didn't know how to handle it. And my dad really suffered from um, depression, especially when we lost my mom at a really young age. I was 13. His whole world was ripped beneath him. And I remember looking back, he was just in a place of real depression, hopelessness, and he didn't have a community around him to support and encourage and be there for the shoulder to cry on. And I remember mm -hmm. sometimes it got really hard, yeah. really quickly. And mm -hmm. um, I think it's so difficult though to talk about it because similar to what you were saying, Josh, as a husband, you want to be the head of the house. You want to be the foundation. Yeah. You want to be the one to lead in. I've actually found the reality is it's the complete opposite. <laughs> Megan for me is like, you know, you're, you're the foundation to our household Thanks, at times. <laughs> you take the weight. And, I don't think and I've heard can... him say this before. I'm quite enjoying this. <laughs> yeah, Keep well, it coming. Enjoy it while, it's, while I'm saying it. But <laughs> no, all joking aside, um, you've been able to take the weight at seasons. And mm -hmm. that for me um, was hard to accept at first. But mm -hmm. I think knowing that God's in it. Yeah. Because we have faith. And our marriage is built with God at the center. And knowing mm -hmm. that... God is protecting Megan. I don't have to. Yes, I should be able to provide for her and be there for her. But when I was going through it, she was the one having to put up with my mood. She was the one having to to be there for me to cry on, you know. And and I think as a husband, it's a pride thing. Yeah, at times, would you yeah. agree with that? Yeah, I and I don't think it's a bad thing. I think you know you do have that desire to protect your mm. wife and your family. Um, but I think, as you said, it's so important to have that other half. Um, and if you're dating, it, it could be your partner, or if you're not, it could be your family. Um, but it's important to have someone to kind of to pick up the slack while you yeah. just take some time to get your head around things. And I know yeah. Becky, my wife, has definitely been that for probably most of our marriage. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. She just has this ability. She's inanely optimistic. Like She's like a Disney character. Just, just nothing will get her down. Love it. Um, and that's super annoying at times, but yeah. most of the time it's really helpful because yeah. it's just, if I'm in a state of mind where it's just I can't really process something or I can't really deal with that right now she, she'll just yep let me deal with that that's fine and she's she's incredible yeah. we've got great wives yeah 100% yeah definitely like you need to come on the show and yeah. just you know uh, enjoy these compliments we are receiving <laughs> right now this is great um, keep it coming but you know what I think as well because we you know we, we're obviously Christians sitting here you know we, we belong to church we serve in church you know and and it does say in scripture, doesn't it? It says in the Bible, I think something like 365 times do not fear. And fear, you know, we can kind of, come, you know, link that into sort of depression, fear, worry, this whole anxiety. So why do we still fear? Like if we are, you know, and I know for you two, you've got a strong faith. It's not like your faith is lacking. It's not like you both don't love God or you both don't trust him, but you still have this fear, this anxiety, this sort of worry. So why do you think we still do fear, even if we do trust God? And God says so many times not to fear, but we still do. Yeah, it's always, I always find it when I take my eyes off him. It's like when yeah. Peter's on the water and he's looking at Jesus and yeah. he's able to walk on the water. But as soon as he takes his eyes off him, his fear consumes him and the water consumes it. And I, that's kind of like when I'm good in my devotional life and I'm good in my spiritual life, I'm, I'm in full faith like, and I've fixed my eyes on God and I know I'm putting him first, I'm serving in church and, and everything's good. You still can wobble, I think. But yeah. as soon as you just, you fall off that routine a little bit and you, you, you fall away from, not fall away from God, but just take your eyes off him. Mm. I think that's when you, you, your whole priority shifts and the anxiety or the depression or whatever you're dealing with suddenly has a higher place than God yeah. and you, you you struggle with that more than if you would be like I just reset and I need to fix like I have whatever I'm going through 100% faith that God will will come through because I've seen it so many times already yeah. um, and it's easy to say that when you're not dealing with it but when you are dealing with it you suddenly oh my days how how are we possibly going to deal with this now whereas if you fix your eyes on God you remember oh well he dealt with that and he mm. dealt with that before that and he dealt with that yeah. before that and you can't see it at the time Yeah, but you can looking back, it's like, he's never failed to come through. Yeah. yeah. Why would he, why would he not now? Mm. Uh, but for me, it's always like, you know, you hear it so many times and, and sometimes like if just being dead honest, sometimes like people throw in scripture at you mm. who have no understanding of how to deal with anxiety or how to deal with depression isn't actually that helpful. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, you, you could, you, you think of so many verses, um, and you can recite them, you can put them on your mirror, you can you could get them tattooed on you for all I care. Yeah. I think if you're not dealing with the practical side as well, it, 
it's hard to say. It, it, it's not that it won't work. I, like he, he could 100. percent Yeah. He could 100 percent heal you. Um, but I think he, he, you know, he takes you take the first step, and I'll take the 99. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I think to take that first step is like go and seek some practical help. Like yeah. go, and, yeah. go and seek. What about how? how when great. do you find like? your anxiety flares up or is it are they just seasons for me actually it's funny um my anxieties always seem to flare up at different seasonal changes of my life mm. Mm. so when we had um clara our first and then we had a house change mm. and then obviously, but it started when we first got married actually because yeah. we got married and i've never seen him cry before when the dating obviously when we were engaged never seen him cry i was like you know this is who I'm married. And then we got married. As soon as we moved into our new house, suddenly he was having these breakdowns and crying. And I was going, who have I married? Like, what is this? <laughs> I'm, is not, this I'm not prepared for this. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I just married this happy Irish guy and he's crying at me all the time. But no, I think that was your first one, wasn't it? And yeah. that, I remember that season because I remember he was given so many blessings in that season. But actually mm. what the enemy was doing, he was turning the blessings into burdens and everything that was meant to be good. So the marriage the new job you got, a new house. You know, we, we started leading young adult ministry. All these new things that were coming into your life were actually blessings, but actually sometimes the enemy can turn them into sort of making them feel like they're burdened and they were heavy. So I think for you at the start, it was like big changes. Remember we were speaking about this, we were saying when there's a big change in your life, it can trigger your anxiety. Yeah, I definitely think big changes are a big contributor. Um, communication as well. So doing this makes me anxious used to it's strange now because I look back on the last year and I've had a bit of a season out of this type of thing as in communication and I find now I've come back with a new mindset that sort of goes no actually God has called you to be in this position to speak to young adults mm. so you need to walk in that God has not brought you this far to make you feel yeah um, and I think for me I've developed what I would almost describe as like, I'm not going to say I don't care anymore, but I think I've learned to care less yeah, yeah. about certain aspects because yeah. my whole, and this has changed really since I've become a father. And the reason why is because I now see how God sees me because yeah. I see my children the way God sees me. And I know that through different seasons of life, when they, my anxiety flares up, it's somehow being becoming a father. I don't, I don't know if you find the same yeah, thing, 100%. but it's simplified everything. It's really made me question what really is important. And it's actually, it's been such a experience um, to now look back and go, wow, what I used to get so worked up about, yeah. really, it doesn't matter. I think yeah. part of the whole anxiety for me was I was trying to be someone I wasn't. I had this um, expectation of myself, and Megan knows I'm a perfectionist. I like to try and become the best version of me when actually yeah. me trying to force that was actually making me the worst version of me. Yeah. And I, th I think um, the whole thought of I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy enough to do this. Who am I? Who's going to listen to me? I'm a farmer boy from Ireland that can't even speak clearly. Like all these thoughts and, and what happens is you, you get on this trip and you've maybe experienced this before, Josh, but like you get on this like vicious circle of, of having a thought. The enemy then is very great at reminding you of your weaknesses. So the weaknesses that maybe come up then back up that thought that you're not good enough, that you're not worthy enough, that you shouldn't be doing this. Then all of a sudden you start to believe, believe the own lie that you've created in your own head. And then if you're the one that believes it, I think so often it's the hardest person's opinion to change is your own. Yeah. And you almost have to go, I was wrong to yourself. And this is wrong to yourself, even though it's what you think. So we're starting to almost like retrain and reprogram your mind to become, instead of the first thought being negative, which mine often is, my first thought is positive. And at first it's foreign, it's weird, like trying to have that force, that positive thought. But after some time, mm -hmm. it becomes a little bit easier. Yeah. yeah but definitely. I don't know, have you experienced anything like that? I or? think so, yeah. It's usually like um, if you picture like a, there's, there's gates and if you let a thought in, they all run in. And they yeah. spiral a little bit. Whereas generally, if you, you know, you can keep the gate shut. Um, I don't think that's necessarily healthy because it's not dealing with it. It's just 
no, 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 don't, I don't, don't want to deal with that right now. Um, I think for me, I didn't really understand it until I, I went to counselling, uh, which I've been numerous times, but the recent one, they diagnosed me with two things. They said, I've got one, which is generalised anxiety disorder, which is, mm. um, to put it plainly, said they're always the people, which I would probably describe as both of us, where people would say, really, you have, you have, you have anxiety i would i'd have never known and they're the ones that like internalize it and, and yeah. they don't they don't you wouldn't you'd never know publicly but it's always like the what if worry yeah like mm -hmm. anything could be what if um so the other day i was worrying about when libby goes off to university yeah. which is 18 years away but for <laughs> yeah. some reason i'm just consumed <laughs> oh. by it um and I, the other half is uh, i've got health anxiety which is the biggest battle for me right now is is just you could like someone could say oh, i've been diagnosed with something very minor i will immediately think i've got that um or it could be something horrifying mm. um and i'll think i've got that and it won't be a little thought i'll be convinced mm. i've got it and i'll go up to the doctor and i've had they'll, they're very understanding mm. they uh, they'll send me for multiple scans of yeah. all of the same region um and they'll say no there's nothing there it's all good and i'll believe them for like a day and then Mm. At later on i'll be thinking, yeah, but what what if they were wrong you know these professionals that have yeah. trained for 10 years in their respective and <laughs> i'm like yeah but i've googled and it says <laughs> um yeah. but it, it will it will it will cripple me like yeah. i can't i think it, it stems from i used to work at a doctor's surgery so yeah I, I think it stems from just being in that centralized environment of you know everyone was getting diagnosed with something and everyone was you know there, there were deaths there were births so, you yeah. know, there was a lot and i think i hadn't been exposed to say cancer yeah in my family no one had died from it i hadn't lost anyone and then suddenly i'm around all these people that you see one day wow. and then a few days later you get a note that oh they passed away and you're just like oh, it's just yeah and wow. you don't realize how much it affects you until later and then as you say when your daughter comes along it's suddenly like it's so everything is simplified it's like no i have to protect her and that's like that's my only job now mm. um and for me i've really struggled with that from a yeah. sense of i think everything everything changed so me i like routine yeah. like yeah. i love routine um so when lockdown hit even though i was an introvert and it was amazing i loved it um but we moved house yeah. um in lockdown we had a baby in lockdown yeah uh we you know work work changed we were working from home and then church changed so yeah. the four main aspects of wow. my life all changed um and for, and i just didn't seem to be able to cope yeah, yeah and understand why i didn't realize what what had caused it or triggered it i was just like i'm not yeah. in a good place yeah. um and i was actually speaking to luke one morning um who has been just constant advice for me over the years like yeah he, and he just said yeah but everything's changed like everything has changed for you yeah um so you just, your body's still trying to get you just familiar with this this new way of of life and um and that made a lot of sense to me i was like oh yeah that that, made, that, that does help um but i think it's so important to to go to counseling yeah. Yeah. to or just to see you have to have it surround you like you were saying your dad had no support network mm. you yeah. have to surround yourself with yeah good people. so josh you were talking about obviously you went and got a diagnosis from the doctor about what the anxiety was so what would you say to a young adult who's maybe watching and thinking you know am i struggling in this because i keep having these same things should i go and seek uh, advice from the medical you know to yeah. find out yeah. what it is like when did that for you become what what was it that made you go i need to go and get some help for this or you know i think i need to and then they, they obviously diagnosed it and they spoke to you mm. through it so what would you say for someone who's i think there's two there's two parts of it and i i, I feel quite passionate about this but i'll be careful not to misspeak because it, it can come across like quite rude and i, d yeah, I genuinely no. don't intend <laughs> it to be i think a lot of people um will overuse the words anxiety and depression yeah, uh, yeah. particularly depression um when the, you you haven't got it and it's not for me to say i'm not a clinician yeah. i don't I, I can't diagnose but but sometimes you'll hear people say like oh, i'm just so depressed lately yeah and it's like I, t I don't think you are i think you've had a rough month rough week yeah you know, your boss has yelled at you you're, you're going through some stuff and i 100 percent i'm with you for that like I'm, I'm there for you but don't speak it over your life if you haven't got it. I, I wow. think to yeah, say so to say powerful. like you know there's so much power in your words to say yeah, oh, I've so got anxiety. It's like have you have, has someone diagnosed yeah. you? Because if you have, you can deal with it. But if you if you're just worried, if you if you're an anxious so person true. or you're just going through some stuff, don't speak that over your life because I think you you can get it if you speak it over your life. Wow. Yeah. Particularly with depression, I think that's a misun. I've grown up with depression. My mum, dad, and sister had it. Um, 
I don't think I've ever had it. I wouldn't say I've been down. I don't think I've ever had depression. Yeah. I think depression is where you it's can't different. get out of bed and yes. you can't focus on stuff. And yeah. I think that is a real crippling, yeah. horrifying yeah. thing to go to. Um, but that's always upset me when people say, oh, I'm just, I'm just so depressed. Yeah. And it's like, maybe, I, I, I like, but make sure you are. Like you yeah. go and speak to someone if, and if mm -hmm. then they can help. Um, then on the other side of it is if you do think you've got it or you do think you're struggling with something and you could do with help, absolutely go and speak to the doctor. Yeah. Like, or you can, I, I self-referred to the mental health on the Wirral mm. um, and they were brilliant. Like they, they were fantastic. They do all sorts of like questionnaires and they say, right, you score high with this. And I was, it didn't feel like a very long wait at all, you know, especially on the, the NHS is brilliant. Um, yeah. I, you, if you don't want to wait, you can absolutely go privately. But um, I found to be able to talk to someone who wasn't attached to the situation. Mm -hmm. So I can speak to Becky who is a rock and she can talk me down of most things. But sometimes like you need someone who's outside of the situation and be like, yeah, but have you thought a bit about it like this or who's trained in it? Mm -hmm. um, and for me, it, it was, I've been to counseling a number of times for various different things. But for me, I remember distinctly, we just moved house. So Libby was about four or five months maybe. And uh, I was sat with her on the couch and I was, I, I was in tears and I couldn't, I couldn't control it. And she's not, she wasn't at an age where she kind of knows anything's wrong. She's just, this a human yeah. being. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think she could even see me. Oh. Um, but I was in tears because I couldn't stop worrying about if she got diagnosed with something. Yeah. Or um, if I got diagnosed with something and I, I, I've got quite a good imagination. So I remember picturing me saying goodbye to her. Mm. Yeah. On, at the end. Mm. And uh, and I, <laughs> I don't fear death. Like I, don't, I know yeah. where I'm going. Don't fear death. I fear not being able to look after her. And you probably feel yeah. the same way. Um, so I was in in tears. And Becky said, "This thing is robbing you of your joy. Yeah, with mm. you, with your young daughter. Like you're missing out on this." Um, and that for me was like, yeah, that's that's true. I hadn't realised how bad it had gotten. Even though you sat there crying for no reason yeah. whatsoever. Um, I hadn't realized how bad it got. And so she said, like, you, know, you need to go and, and seek help. Um, mm. And we did. And I'm still getting counseling weekly for it. So I wouldn't yeah. say I, I definitely haven't beaten it. Mm. I've definitely not like, I, you know, to have advice. Oh, what did you do? I was like, I don't know. I'm still doing it. Yeah. Um, but I think the biggest thing is just to be able to talk to someone about it, whereas yeah. it's a, like a close friend or, or a pastor or, you know, your you team leader, life group leader. Um, but if you think it's bad enough that you think, no, I should probably, yeah. I should probably get some help with this. Definitely don't hesitate yeah. in doing that because they might diagnose. They said, "Oh no, you haven't actually. Like you don't score." Yeah. And I think that would be really helpful because it's, yeah. oh, okay, I'm better than I thought yeah. I would be. Um, but they might say, "Yeah, you, you are struggling with this in particular, yeah. and here's a ton of stuff we can do yeah, um, to help." You with, know, but... you, you said there about obviously how you, you know, you're still going through this. You're not, you're not past it. You're not sort of at the end of it. And I've conquered anxiety. I've conquered fear, and I'm through this. So it's obviously a journey, isn't it? It's something that you haven't got to the end of and, you know, you journey through it and mm. you're learning as you go and you're speaking about it. So, um, Nathan, maybe you can input onto this. So what is something that you've maybe learned on this journey that you've had as well of anxiety? What's something that you've, you, you know, you don't have the answer to it. You don't have the, 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 you know, the solution, but what have you learned? Like what's some things that could help? So, yeah, I mean, just listening to Josh talk then, I think his experience was different to mine because when I went to counseling, I was almost in denial that I had anxiety or depression. And she did the whole, you know, all the questions that yeah. you have to go through and it's a self-assessment type thing. And she said to me, so before I give you the result, what do you think? I said, oh yeah, it's, it's pretty mild, you know, it's fine. I'm, I'm dealing with it, it's fine. And she said, Nathan, you're actually t almost off the scale to severe anxiety, general anxiety and severe depression and I was shocked and she and then she started to go through each of my answers and started to show me and then I was like did I really put that yeah and I think for me that was like a counseling for me was a real eye-opening experience where I was able to talk to someone in a safe environment mm -hmm. someone that wasn't going to judge someone that wasn't going to cast their opinions like mm -hmm. you said earlier mm -hmm. people will try and help yeah. And they mean well, and especially if they're people in the life of church who you trust, who you confide in, who you go to. And I love those people. 
but because they haven't been through anxiety and they haven't experienced it, it's almost at times throwing more fuel on the fire. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I find that personally, and I, I, I love those people and their hearts to help, but giving me scripture, telling me, hey, it's going to be okay, like it does the complete opposite thing and it almost makes it even worse. So my point is, when I was with this counselor, she didn't have any biasness. She didn't have any agenda. She didn't have any thoughts to add. She just helped me understand my own head and what's going on to where I was able then to pull apart the web and really start to piece together the reasons to why I was feeling like this. And it was so helpful. And I think for me, you know, it, it took a wheels off moment. And over the years, I can look back and I can see um, how it's been little episodes to start with. And it's just built up and built up and built up probably till now about 18 months ago or over that where it got so bad. Um, and this was off the back of multiple things in my world changing, a big high pressure um, communication thing that I had to deliver um, to the young adults and the youth at the time. And I was just overwhelmed with many things. And, I, and me being a perfectionist, it just became too much. And it blew up. I mean, it really blew up. Wheels came off. It was really bad. Um, I ended up actually having to go on to medication to try and help balance things, um, both chemically um, and, and also as well, just trying to give me some sort of stability again. I just felt like I was just losing my mind. And it got really dark. Um, and I started to have these thoughts that it really haunts me to this day that the fact that I've even had these thoughts, but like, I remember like in the middle of the night, getting up, walking and literally walking for like two hours. And I went all the way down to New Brighton Pier. I stood on the beach and I was like, in my own head, I, I had convinced myself that everyone else around me would be better off without me. And then if I just kept walking into the ocean, no one would care. It actually would help people. And that moment for me was like a, a revelation moment because literally right then, I've, I've never really audibly hear God speak before and I'm not going super spiritual or not or anything, but it was like a whisper and it was just like, I'm here. It's okay. I've got you. And... <sighs> I know it sort of sounds a little bit cliche perhaps, but for me in that moment, that was my encounter. And I was just like, man, I've got, I've come so far. Mm. I've achieved all these blessings. And what gets me every time now is, is I look at like a photo say of our family and I go, how did I almost say no to that? Like how did, yeah, yeah. How did my own thought pattern lead me to even consider and have the thought that my family would be better off without me? When actually, it would have been horrendous for you, for our mm. kids to have to go through that alone. Mm. And I think for me, the reason why I say this is to almost, is to not glorify anxiety or depression, but to really help people understand how a series of events and a series of episodes of anxiety and depression can really lead to a place where you don't wanna be, you don't wanna find yourself. And my advice would be, if you, the sooner you can go to counseling, the better, because I didn't understand I had that problem until it was really far on. Yeah, definitely. Where if yeah. I got it earlier in the process, I mm. think it would have been able to nip it in the bud earlier on. Yeah. Whereas I had a lot of work to do, a lot of counseling, and I had to literally have a whole period of time out. That was like almost a year. I had to just have, have out from everything, all responsibilities, and just, you know, focus on my family, yeah. my kids, paying the bills and that was it yeah. and now I look back and I go God's brought me through this whole journey to help me understand that actually he's the one that's going to be with mm. me through it all through the the valley moments through the mountaintop moments yeah and I think for me you know that was my experience but but yeah, yeah. Well, what would you say to you know so young adults the culture we live in right now is quick 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 like we just want to 
get to the next things quickly. You know, we want to finish university quickly. We want to get a job. We want to get married. We want to have all these things. And you, you you want your life to be flourishing, don't you? And, you know, even if you're you're sick, if I'm sick anyway, like physically, I'm like, oh, I just want to hurry this up. You know, yeah. I remember when I first had Clara and I thought, you know, we had, that was when we had the big Braveheart um, Unleash. It was like the first sort of conference day we had. And I was, I was like determined I was going to be there. And I was like, I oh, she's to quickly hurry up this recovery so I can get there. And honestly, I think God purposefully no we didn't but you know I had a horrendous recovery and it took a lot longer than I thought and I was sitting waiting thinking oh for goodness sake like I just want to be better so I can do the next thing I just want to be able to take her out and show her to everyone and you're constantly wanting to get to the next thing you just want to be over something you just want to be through it you just want to see the other side you just want to see a healthy side of you you know I think I've experienced that physically and being like, oh, my body is like, when can I have my normal body back? And then I get pregnant again and we do it again. So. <laughs> God's just laughing. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, well, you, you do it, obviously mine, you do it again. But anyway, but you know, with anxiety, it's different. And some people could be thinking right now, oh, I'm struggling with this and I'm, I'm in this low season, but I just want it to hurry up and, and have that quick fix. But is there a, such a thing? Like, do you think there is a quick fix to anxiety? Um, I think there's a temporary fix to anxiety. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So if, if someone, I don't know if you feel this, if someone were to ask me, do you think you'll ever beat it? I don't, I honestly don't think I will. Um, I think it might be something I just always have to battle with, mm-hmm. um, which isn't a bad thing because it draws you closer to God. Yeah. If you purposefully do that, um, it can draw you further if you're not on guard for it a little bit. Um but it's like Paul with the thorn in his side prayed. He's prayed for years for healing, but he never got it. Mm. And I think sometimes if I, I, I have asked God to heal me of it. Um, but in the last year or so, I haven't actually been praying for healing of it. I've been praying to help me deal with it. Yeah, I've been praying to help me get through this season of it um, or to take in the counselling or to find the scripture or to be able to help others talk talk about it a little more um but how, if it, is it something he can heal me of absolutely yeah. is it something he will i don't know um i i 100 think he could whether he wants to or think if that would be the best thing for me i have no idea um but i think the, a temporary fix is there are coping mechanisms you can mm. do like breathing techniques um, yeah. someone showed me like a, a piece of paper, like an A4 piece of paper, and you would run your finger along the top of it and breathe in for that and then spin it around and run along the shorter side and breathe out. And that really helps. Um, and all these techniques I've, I've been shown, uh, it's all distraction. Mm. Like you just distract yourself from it, yeah. which is a, is good if you're in a situation where you need to calm down. Um, but it is just kind of putting a lid on it a little bit like it's not actually dealing with the issue mm. i think there has to be more conversation about mental health because yeah. you hear su- you hear suicides every day yeah and you yeah. know you, you, you're stuck in traffic on the way home you're like what is this and you find out some young 19 year old has thrown himself off a bridge and i can't mm. you believe that that th- this guy got to a point where he thought suicide was the best option for him like there was no support around him there was no one yeah. saying well have you have you tried this um it's like you said earlier, you know, people offer advice. I, just, I think if you don't know it about it, don't I don't offer advice. I think it can be quite dangerous. Yeah. Um, the funniest, I always laugh at is people say, oh, don't worry. It's like I've never, ever thought of that. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah. Uh, like, don't worry, just, it'll oh, be fine. I never considered that. <laughs> um, and they mean well, but it's just like, yeah. Uh, but um, I think there has to be more conversation about it. Yeah. There has to be an acceptance that it's absolutely okay yeah. that you're going through it. Yeah. Um, it's okay that you're you're in this season right now i think so many people have it in various stages of 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 intensity but i think most people will struggle with mental health at some point in their life if not everyone um you know like with a pregnancy you can have postpartum depression Mm. you could you could have been fine your entire life but suddenly hormones kick in it can be chemical imbalances yeah Yeah. um i think there's i've been on medication in the past and it did help but it affected other areas negatively mm. um so for me I, I didn't i didn't find it they offered it me again recently and i said no mm. um it numbed the anxiety and it numbed the fear but it also yeah. numbed the joy wow. i just felt i was yeah. in this like pff, yeah. not yeah. kind of finding i don't know whether you had the same um so they offered it me again they said it can be very helpful um hand in hand with counseling which i, I definitely un- understand that it could um but for me it just wasn't Mm. I, I don't think I'd do it again unless yeah. it was mm. really severe and it was affecting family life. Yeah. Um, but I think you can distract yourself from it, but you yeah. just, you're not really, 
oh, I don't want to deal with that right yeah. now. It's mm. like, well, but why? Because if, if, if you catch it early, yeah, you might be able to get a handle on it. I think yeah. for me, the understanding what happens physically and how you become anxious was really helpful to me yeah. uh, because it's not just some oh it's not a mental thing it's like no no it's like it's learned behavior so for me my dad was like super anxious um i say was is um always had depression would like it, attempted suicide and threatened mm. suicide mm. for for as long as i can kind of remember um particularly in my teenage years so i learned to worry and mm. i learned to it's, like, I, 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 it's not like a coping mechanism. I just started to become very, I was always an anxious child. Yeah. Um, and then I remember, especially when I started dating, that, uh, and this is really funny and embarrassing, but I'll tell anyone, hmm. um, I started getting to the point where I was getting so nervous that I'd vomit when I was around a girl. And it started like, you know, it would build up and build up and build up and I'd vomit and you feel better when you vomit because it's like yeah. this just explosion almost. And uh, it got worse and worse um, to the point where, if I was around a girl, I like I would instantly vomit, oh, wow. and, it would, no. like, and it wouldn't be like. You see, I've seen this in movies, and I thought it wasn't a thing, so it yeah, must yeah, be a thing. Uh, <laughs> it, and it's, it's just like I have to go right now. Um, I remember actually. <laughs> He's considering should, should I say this? <laughs> yeah. Come on! So I took a girl out for the, for a date, and I won't say who it was. Um, I took a girl for a date to the beach and uh, took the dog out, and it was great. Like we had a nice day, and uh, I was like, "Oh, this is this feels great. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm okay." And then got back to the car, put the dog in the back seat, and she's in the passenger seat. And suddenly I have this wave of like, oh my days, I'm going to vomit. Um, you can't stop it. Like, there's no way of stopping it. So I vomit. It hits the <laughs> it hits the steering wheel. And obviously the steering wheel is angled, so it goes that way and uh, hits her. <laughs> oh, no. And um, she was mega understanding. But I just disagree. I take it that's not Becky. No, no, no. <laughs> I just, I, she would I just, have left then. <laughs> oh, gosh. I distinctly remember looking in the uh, rear view mirror and my dog was just looking at me in the mirror. It's like, <laughs> what are you doing? What are we doing? together, dude? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, she was mega understanding. I think, um, but I, funnily enough, on our first date, on my first date with Becky, I was very nervous when I could, I knocked on the door and she, I could hear her coming to get me. And I was really nervous. I was like, oh, I'm going to vomit. I'm going to vomit oh, on the doorstep. I'm going to vomit. And she opened it and this instant peace. Wow. I was instantly... And I swear down from the first she day, was I was the like, one? this is the girl I'm going to marry. I wow. love it. Um, and she's, she's, I've never, I never feel worried around her. She's always wow. had this ability to calm me down. Um, I can't remember where I was going with that, but I was just embarrassed That was myself. a great story then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. So the counsellor I saw at the time, and she said those were panic attacks. Mm -hmm. It was your way of learning how to cope with it. So your body felt better after vomiting. So as the time went on, it learned, oh, I'm panicking, I'll, I'll have to vomit. And I feel better. And I always did feel better. Um, but I had it down to a T. I would like pretend I left something in the boot, pull over, vomit the side, open the boot. No, it's not there. Short, vomit again and get back in the car. Mm. I had it perfected. Um, not that it was a good thing. Um, but she said, no, they were panic attacks. So it was learned. I learned how to deal with the anxiety. Wow. I learned yeah. how to feel better subconsciously. I didn't, I wasn't actively trying to feel better. Um, and I think there's a fine balance of like uh, guys in particular will say mm. oh well uh, it's my dad's fault my dad was the same way or or stuff and i said that for a long time to be fair mm. oh it's oh it's my it, it, it's not my fault i learned it off my dad or he, he he was just like this when i was younger and i i just don't think i've got to this point in the last year or so it's just that's not an excuse like yeah. you're your own guy like you're own, you're your own girl like you stuff terrible things might have happened to you when you were younger and i'm really sorry that they did mm. um and it must be awful and i hope you have hope you've dealt with that i hope you're okay with that um but like at a certain point it's like but that won't define me yeah. i'm not gonna let That's it define right. me um i'm not gonna let what my dad did become who i am like yeah. i'm not gonna yeah. like he he may have been anxious around me and i've learned anxiety i, I swear i libby will not learn it off yeah. me like yeah. I, she will not yeah. be around it um, it's like breaking the generational patterns. Absolutely. And Emma did a preaching this a while ago, um, and she was talking about how do not let that thing define you. Mm -hmm. And when you get past that, you'll learn to destroy that thing that once held you captive. And she was talking about how you can go into the enemy camp and take back what's rightfully yours. Mm -hmm. And in my experience, um, you know, when you were talking before about being on, on medication and, and having that numbness and having that like sense of, I'm not really here right now. I had that too. And 
also as well, we were talking about the whole panic attack thing. I had a few instances, I don't even know if I ever told you this, Meg. I had a few instances where I almost crashed the car. I literally had to pull over. I was having a full on panic attack. And I remember, um, I, I think back to when my, my dad was struggling with it. He, he had a similar style of panic attack, which is weird. Um, and when I told my counselor this, she was like, you do realize that that, you know, because you've potentially witnessed that as a child, that might be your go-to type style of to it. panic attack. Yeah. And it became so much. And so it came, it hit me so fast and so hard. And it was out of the blue a lot of the time, which is just crazy. Cause you kind of go, well, how does that even happen? It's all these thoughts going around. Cause really the only time I get to be by myself sometimes if I'm driving, you know, from work to home, I have my music going, some deep worship song. All of a sudden I get these thoughts going and they start building up. And then all of a sudden this happens and I go, wow, maybe that was why this generational pattern and for me and for my kids now like i just want to speak god's word i want to speak 100%. confidence i want to speak yeah. you are who god says you are your identity is secure mm. uh, and going back to earlier when i was talking about how I, he I heard that whisper from god a few months later i was just reading and, and just doing my general day-to-day -day thing and I read this scripture and it's a very famous scripture but you know, when you read it, it like, you know, that's for me right now in this season that yeah, I'm facing bit, like. and it comes to life. And it was in Isaiah 41, 10, it says, fear not for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. In other words, don't be distracted by all these things that are going on, all these thoughts that's in your head right now. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I'm not just a God for people who, who yeah, maybe think good, yeah. that they're worthy. I'm a God for people who don't think they're worthy, who feel they're not enough. I will strengthen you. I will help you. Mm. So when I'm at my lowest point, he's going to be my strength. When I'm at a place where I'm like, I don't know where to go for help, he'll be my help. Yeah. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. In those seasons where you feel like there is no foundation, there is no bottom, there's nothing to hold me up. That's what it is. And I think for me, that was a bit of scripture that really resonated with me and made a lot of sense, but it was only after there come all this, this whole journey of it yeah. all. And I think for me, yeah, not wanting my own kids to face this type of thing is one of my biggest priorities now. And I actually feel a real responsibility to speak up more about this and yeah, you maybe yeah, do as well definitely. to yeah. help all of our young adults because yeah. like I, I, whoever's listening right now, maybe you've found yourself in either me or Josh some of our experiences, I want to say to you right now that this is not the end. This is just yeah. the beginning. I want to tell you that God's got an amazing plan for your life. Absolutely. Yeah. Do not let listen to the lies that you're telling yourself that the enemy is planting in your head. Don't believe them because like Josh said before, it's going to rob you of that, that joy. It's going to mm -hmm. rob you of that life giving plan that God has for you. And um, I just feel like really passionate to be able to say, Hey, do you know what? We're up on platform on a Sunday a lot of the time and everyone thinks they're perfect. Their life's <laughs> fine. It's not. We're yeah. messed up. Yep. We're broken. We are sinners and we're only trying to follow a God who, who wants the best for us. But doesn't mean that we're going to be, you know, excluded or, or we're not going to go through these things. Yeah. doesn't mean that we're going to be immune to these things. We're mm -hmm. going to come up against them. We're going to face them. And I think it's in that response of yeah. collective. We've both been through this. What can we look at? What can we what learn? Can we learn yeah. Is there a quick fix? I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. But I know that there's strength in numbers. And yeah. I know that there's yeah. strength in believing what God says in his word. That he will be that strength. That he will help me. Yeah. That he will uphold me. Yeah. That he's got me. And that's so good. I think, you know, to wrap it all up, I think, you know, like you were saying, Josh, you know, you're, it's a journey. Will you overcome it? You won't. You don't know. But I love the fact that you both don't play the victim. You know, like you said, we wouldn't know this about you both. And I think that's actually a good thing because you don't go around sort of, moping yeah. in it at, at, and being low in it you're actually you're running your race like both of you are running your lanes you're both you know being fathers you're both leading in church you're both following God's call on your life you're both you know you both have joy in your life you both smile you both have friends you have laughs you have a full life yes you have this what you're battling through and it's hard and it's and it's difficult and you know we can't all understand it but you know for you it's your battle and but I love the fact that you know you're both not sitting there 
on your own in it and you're, you know, weeping in it, you're, you're striving for, for your life. And I, I think that's so encouraging for the young adults to look at, like right now, wherever they're going through, whatever the season they're in, they can know God can still use me. God yep. can still that's have right. a plan for me. God can still do this to me. I can have this. He can lead me through this. He can give me the strength through this. I might still struggle with it, but I know my God is good and he will bring me through it. And he's still got a calling for my life. You know, all mm. the characters in the Bible, most of them went through stuff, didn't they? And, and he would still use them and bring them through because, you know, God, that's just how God is. He's mm. a good God. Um, so guys, I just want to say thank you for opening up. You know, that was real vulnerable. Thank you for those who are listening right now. They're going to be so thankful that you guys have stepped up and started this conversation. I think this is a starting conversation that's getting put up on YouTube, but I hope this conversation continues. Yeah. I hope they continue in life group. I hope they continue in friendship groups. I hope people see this now and think, well, actually, like, I want to talk about this with more people. So I want to encourage young adults. You know, the main advice I've learned from this is conversation is healthy. You know, yeah. it's good to talk about it. So guys, I want to encourage you guys to go and find some people you trust. And, and have this conversation um, don't let it stop here today with us let this be a start of, of a good yeah. conversation so guys thank you so Josh thank you so much for joining thank us thank you Josh you Thanks know uh, I mean that's sick story you know I, I know it probably wasn't funny at the time but that, that's <laughs> amused me I'm just like I thought it was a thing on movies that was like why are they throwing up yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah. it's a yeah. thing but... dating wasn't good like, <laughs> <laughs> you're married now God is yeah, good he's fine. blessed yeah. you <laughs> it's all good <laughs> just but... wait till uh, some guy turns up at your door trying to take your daughter out then you'll come back <laughs> then he'll come back again I'll <laughs> Oh, but young adults, that's all we've got time for today for this podcast. Hey, why don't you share this? Because this is an a podcast not to miss. You need to listen to it again. Share it to your world. Share it to people who are in church, not church, because this is relevant for all all people because you know a lot of people are struggling with this in this season Um, so we thank you for listening tune in again next time to our podcast so peace out peace out